So I started having all these hallucinations, hearing voices, and one time I was in my room and I had voices and began to sense the presence of evil. And it was like I was overpowered by evil presence. And I could hear them. But I didn't see, but I could hear them. And then a voice said to me, in those days we didn't have standby generators and any of those things. So when your light went off, you, you lighted a candle. So I had a candle and a match uh, in my room. So the voice said, light the candle. My dear. And he said, place your right palm on the flame. And uh, it didn't make sense, but it was as if I could not resist the power of the voice. And so I placed my right palm on the flame, and that is the result of this. I could see the flesh, you know, opening up and the bones popping out, and blood was all over the place. My lips were sealed. Uh, but I couldn't resist the command and my hand was on the flame and my hands was roasting on the fire you know and after a long time the pain was unbearable so I screamed and I shouted you know and I think the security head and called for uh, help so they came and broke my door and uh, when they came, uh, took me out, all the fingers were gone. And I ended up at the hospital for four months with all kinds of procedures and things to help me. And I will run out of the ward. They have to arrest me, bring me back, put me in chains, inject me to get me to be calm, to sleep. And uh, I was having all kinds of spiritual experiences. couple of months, an Indian scientist, one Dr. Raj, Mrs. Raj came to uh, speak to me about Jesus, gave me some tracks and that was where I had an encounter with Jesus and got born again. And right there from the bed of affliction, I started talking about Jesus and testifying of him based on my personal encounter and I knew from that very moment as I had an encounter with Jesus that I was born for uh, this purpose and that is to preach the word of God to bring salvation to souls and to others. I remember I was in boarding school as a kid when um, I came back from school I was told that um, Nick had lost his three fingers, um, he had burnt his fingers, and my dad was very, very, very worried about it. Um, and through that, he, he said he was born again. And you can imagine, nobody believed him. They thought he was joking, you know. But as time went on, those of us who took him serious, we see that, you know, really, um, God's calling was upon his life. And um, it was pretty sad, it wasn't easy. And he went through a lot. As a new convert, Nicholas was filled with hope, peace, and yet a deep spiritual hunger. The answers he sought about life were explained by God as he continually prayed and fasted. The reborn Nicholas proceeded to study in a Bible school under the great Benson Idahosa in Nigeria, where he learned a great deal. He was phenomenal. I haven't seen anybody preach the gospel with that kind of power and charisma and audacity. And I said, whoa! This is what I want. I want some of what this guy has. I remember um, Archbishop Duncan Williams 
being a part of the Bible school. He was either alumni or just senior at that point. And uh, he was so fiery. And then the Lord said, yes, you can have it. Go see and he'll tell you what to do. And I said, me? Go see this guy. How can I find him? So I made a call and I was told where his office was and that he was in town. So I rushed to his place and when I got in there, he was just leaving to the airport to go to Nigeria. So I stopped him right there at the reception. And he said, young man, what can I do for you? And I said, the Lord told me to come see you and you tell me what to do. And he said, the Lord hasn't told me anything about you. So I said, ask him. Then it's okay, you leave your number and go, I'll ask him. So I left my number and I left. A month ago, I had a call that I've been given scholarship to come to Benin City. So I went, and when I went to see him, uh, the Lord said, he's your Bible school, watch him. Just watch him. Uh, and so I got in there. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. I didn't speak good English. I was speaking pidgin English, you know, broken English. So everything was messed up. Daddy would call him to pray. And oh God, even then, and uh, it was amazing. So I said, Lord, something is wrong here. Can't read, can't write, can't speak English. And you told it, I to give me scholarship to come to Bible school to do what? You know? And then the Lord said, have you not heard that I am an ex expect of making nobody's somebody's and making something out of nothing. And I said, then you have to make something out of this because I'm really nothing. And he said, as long as you acknowledge and you remember that you are nothing, I will make something out of you and somebody out of you. We stand by that which was determined in eternity in the archives before time to declare the prophetic word. Now, Satan, hear ye the word of the Lord. It is written to subvert a man in his course, appointed by heaven. The Lord permitted it not. The Lord approved it not. And therefore we declare that there shall be no sabotaging nor subverting of the man of this house in his cross. He will run his race. He will finish his cross. In the name of he who died and laid in the grave and arose, triumphant on the third day. He has raised thousands of spiritual sons and daughters globally. Everything that pertained to my eternal destiny, the original intention of God, has now come into my life in divine alignment. And that all happened as a result of my covenant connection and relationship to Archbishop, to Papa. Although some people see a peer-to-peer, -peer, I see um, my life would have been probably destroyed my purpose by the plan of the enemy had Archbishop, my papa, not stood in place. From the troubled streets of Ghana to the annals of power across the world, Nicholas, Nick, Pastor Nicholas Duncan Williams, Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, and today, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, the Apostle of Strategic Prayer, is one of God's chosen generals for the front line and end time harvest. Say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, oh! Oh! And I'm trusting God, who has brought me that far that for the next uh, 40 years of my life in Jesus' parish, that God will enable me 
and uh, empowerment to walk wisely and with illumination and a better appreciation and understanding for why I was giving life and that I will impact my world more than ever before. Tell somebody, something is changing in me. Something is changing. There is a metamorphosis going on in my life and in my business. Metamorphosis. Shout yes. Look at me. I'll be more faithful and do more good to humanity than I've ever done. God, I said tonight, God, will open your eyes, will remove the veil, and you will see the miracle right where you are, and you don't have to travel to be blessed. You don't have to travel to see a miracle. You don't have to travel to get a breakthrough. You can have your breakthrough right where you are. Somebody lift up your hand. Shout yeah! Shout yeah!